Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Aimstone channel. Let us go ahead and take a look at this 2 hourly Bitcoin chart. As we can see on that day when inflation was released hotter than expected we had a massive dump. BTC dropped to almost $18,000. However soon after that as day passed by we had a massive pump. BTC skyrocketed to almost $20,000. It gained more than 10%. Well, why did this happen? To be honest guys, it was just a rational market move. I knew it, it was a fake out and I warned a lot of people that most likely this is a fake out. And here we are. Since then, BTC dropped from almost $20,000 to this current price, slightly over $19,000. So basically, we are back to the price level prior to CPI numbers, which is of course not that bad considering the fact that inflation came up higher than expected. If that was the case, I would expect stock market and Bitcoin to go a bit lower where it was going in the initial hours of that day. However, let's take a look at this bigger picture. Yes, Bitcoin continues to move sideways for almost 5 months. Let's also not forget that during 2017, BTC has also been consolidated sideways for 5.5 months. And then on the 5th month, BTC dropped from $6,000 to $3,200. It dropped by almost 50%. Do I expect something similar to happen this time around? Well, I will not be surprised if this will happen, especially if we will consider the fact what is going on in our current economy, interest rates will continue to go higher, inflation will remain very high, so there is still a lot of work to do by central bankers to get this inflation back to 2% which is the target goal. Now let's take a quick look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 the same as Bitcoin. Tell me, Bitcoin and stock market are not correlated in these liquidation events. Of course they are. The same thing happened to stock market. On those bad inflation numbers, stock market dropped initially, but then it skyrocketed. It closed the day by more than 2.6%. However, the following day we had that massive dump once again, which took place yesterday and stock market closed slightly under 2.4%. So here we are, pump and dump I guess. Now let's take a look at this next chart. This chart represents performance for the third quarter of Bitcoin that is in orange, stock market that is in black and we also have gold that is in this bluish color. As we can see Bitcoin is more or less flat while S&P 500 is down by almost 5% and gold is down by almost 8%. So yes, in this case Bitcoin still remains the best performing asset while everything else collapses. As we know, risk on assets continues to go lower while DXY continues to go higher and higher. DXY is now at 113. We are very close to reach that new all time high that took place few days ago at 114. I guess that is very likely that in the next week we can reach that new all time high for DXY. It seems like all currency around the world collapsing into US dollar. Shout out to Brand Johnson, he was correct on this one with his milkshake theory and he predicted in events such like this all currency will be collapsing into US dollar. So in this point, yes this is great time to hold US dollar and maybe some treasuries. But treasuries could be a ticking bomb, I guess it's just a matter of time when treasuries will implode. Let's just go back to inflation. This chart represents monthly change in September. As we can see, pipe utility gas services had the higher increase, almost 3%. Then we also had motor vehicle maintenance and repair. But what actually brought this inflation slightly down is of course gasoline prices. Gasoline prices month over month is down by almost 5% and fuel oil is down by almost 3%. Now let's take a quick look at the crude oil. We know that for September 30 days average price for the crude oil was at around $85. Let's also not forget that in the beginning of October OPEC cut 2 million barrels per day production. Which is of course if you cut supply and demand remains stable then what will happen to the price? Economic 101. Price will go up. And that's exactly what we saw since the beginning of October. 
at least today oil is back to $85, but is still relatively higher compared to where it was back in September. So imagine what will happen to inflation when the prices for gasoline and the crude oil will be higher in October compared to September. I think in October there is a decent chance that we will have higher CPI numbers in October compared to September. So yes, what it means is that Jerome Powell and Federal Reserve would have to work a lot harder to tempt the inflation down to 2% target. Let's also not forget that another reason why Bitcoin stock market tumbled in the last few days is because inflation expectations for 2023 was revised higher, which is, I guess, not a good look. Let's also take a look at the owner's rent equivalent. This chart represents just rent inflation. As we can see, the rent skyrocketed by more than 7.2% year over year in September, and it continues to go higher and higher. So to be honest guys, I do not think October will be a good month. Now let's take a look at some Bitcoin charts. This chart represents number of addresses with at least one BTC in them. As we can see, this number of addresses continues to go higher and higher. It is on a trajectory to reach 1 million addresses with at least one BTC. Yes, one BTC at this point is not a lot of money, $19,000. But if you have a long-term vision, 5 to 10 years from today, one BTC could be 500,000, even 1 million bucks. So I am sure who is saving their money in Bitcoin at this current moment will be very delighted in the future. If you have a long-term view, you do not have to worry about the shit show that is going on in this global economy. Here is another cool chart. This chart compares asset classes by market capitalization. As we can see, in the grand scheme of things, BTC is very tiny fish in a big swamp. Bitcoin is currently at around $350 billion in market capitalization. It's much smaller compared to the gold that is at $12 trillion. It's even way 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 smaller compared to $56 trillion in equity. And of course, it's way smaller compared to that that is currently at around $300 trillion and even bigger real estate that is at around $326 trillion. If you do not think by the end of this decade Bitcoin will not be at least equivalent to gold's market cap, I think you are delusional. Don't you think the central banks around the world will print more and more money? I think as soon as they see some victory against this inflation, maybe in the next two years they will engage in QE and they will print a huge sums of money once again, just like they have done it in the past. Then BTC will skyrocket. Here is another quite bullish chart. If these patterns would repeat just like we see in this picture, that would be quite beneficial for Bitcoin price even in this near future. But to be honest guys, I do not think we see a lot of similarities in this chart, especially if you compare it to current economic fundamentals. This chart I think represents a likely scenario that may happen in the short term to Bitcoin price action. Yes, it's indeed a bearish chart. But let's also not forget that technicals always have been driven by fundamentals. And fundamentals are currently looking like shit. Yes, interest rates most likely will continue to go higher and higher if they want to really fight that inflation. If that happens, that means that stock market and Bitcoin is likely to go lower. So yes, this descending triangle can actually materialize in the next few weeks. Now, let's take a look at this quick video with this man who correctly predicted Bitcoin price in the past will explain what may happen next. Let's take a look. To be honest, that's one of the biggest concerns I have. And this is kind of shocking. This will be shocking to people, but you have a trillion dollars in, in savings that consumers accumulated over, over COVID, right? And so the Fed is saying, oh, look at these jobs numbers. They're still very, very strong. People are still spending. The consumer is still doing well. So we have to continue to hike rates. Problem is, consumers are going to run out of that money that they saved probably by mid next year. And my biggest fear, and this is like, I mean, this could be what triggers a massive kind of recession, if not worse, is that when they run out of money and the Fed has just hiked and hiked into it, there's going to be a cliff dive in the economy. Everyone's talking about the probability of uh, 75 basis points uh, uh, rate hike by the next meeting, which is the 22nd of November that's coming up. Now, that probability is very high right now. I'm looking at the FedWatch tool on the CME website, 80%. Ooh. 
So uh, not a big chance for a 50, per, uh, 50 basis point hike. And I'm not seeing 100 basis points anywhere. That's no. interesting. Yeah, and I, I think they won't want to do, I mean, if they've done 75 three times in a row, it's, it's unlikely they would now jump because that would really freak the market out to go to 100. So I think you're going to look at 70 or if the CPI data and the economic data shows that we are seeing a lowering inflation number, then maybe you get a 50 in there. I do think that a lot of other central banks like Bank of England, we know they've, they've stepped in here. There's a lot of concern out there from other central banks saying, hey, Fed, you're doing this too quickly. Our economies, our currencies can't handle. You're going to break us. I mean, we, and we kind of did see that in, in the UK. Right. Speaking of inflation, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, up or down next CPI print? 8.3% was the last one for headline CPI. I think you're going to see it coming better than expected, so meaning lower than expected. Okay. All right. So if let's assume you're right, then the Fed doesn't have to be as aggressive, right? Is that what they you're don't saying? have to be. I hope they listen to that. Um, I do worry, like I said, is that they're, they're aggressively wait, you know, hiking, and it takes, I mean, you know, we, we've seen the stats, you've seen the stats, it takes a certain amount of months for every rate hike to filter into the economy. So the question is, if you've done three already, and let's say they do another one in the beginning of November, right. when do we actually see that impact? I mean, so it's almost like you're raising by 3% on the, on the Fed funds rate, and we may not have even seen that hit the economy economy yet. I mean, obviously you've seen it hit housing, right? 7% mortgage rates. I mean, think about housing, how fast that's coming down. I'm seeing it in Florida everywhere, how people are pulling out of deals. If they do pivot by next year, does that signal to you a bottom in the markets by Not, next year? So my guess is it will signal a bait major bounce. Um, but again, like I said before, stock market to me, five, 10 years before we make a new all-time high. But you know what it's going to put a bottom in and there's going to be a new bull market. Bitcoin and gold will outperform. Absolutely. As soon as you get a pivot, gold is going to rip because the dollar will fall. Yeah. And Bitcoin still has some downside because it's still a risk asset. But down the line in like a year, I do expect a major bottom in Bitcoin. Hold up. So are you saying the Nasdaq is going to stay flat for 10 years as well? So not not flat. Let's let's be clear on this. Not making new all-time highs. Oh, no, new all-time So like highs. think about the dot-com, right? It took 15 years to make new all-time highs on the Nasdaq. Yeah. If you look at the, the Brazilian market, if you look at the Hang Seng, both those markets made their highs in 2003, and they have never taken out those highs, but you've still had mini bull markets in there with huge moves to the upside. But the, okay, so wouldn't that may, mean that Bitcoin isn't gonna make new all-time highs because it's been correlated with the stock market? Yeah, so, so it, yeah, you'd, you would think that it wouldn't make new all-time highs, but I actually think that there will be a pivot in Bitcoin as it matures, as regulation helps people feel more confident, institutions feel more confident. You're going to start to see it being treated much more like gold, which will so then it's going to start, start diverging to, from the stocks. It will. Not, not yet. I want to be clear to everyone out there. It's still going to take some time, but there will be probably in about 12 months of divergence that begins. Bitcoin forecast. Uh, let's go. 6K was your last downside. What are you stick? Are you sticking to that? So, so first support is 12 to 13,000. I think in the near term, we're going to see a little bit of a bounce, then a wave down to 12 to 13. And then I do worry that you're going sub 10 to eight, maybe even worst case scenario, 3,500. 3,500, very small percentage, but that would be the equivalent of Amazon.com's collapse in the dot-com era if it were to equal that. Okay. He had a great call in the past. He also compares fundamentals to technicals, which is, I like it very much. I would not just look at technicals by itself whatsoever. Imagine if it would be a perfect economy and we would see the same technicals in this Bitcoin price. Then of course I would be very bullish. However, if we have shit fundamentals, most likely technicals will follow fundamentals. And Gary Soloway had a great call in the past where he called that BTC would drop to around $20,000. At that time, BTC was over $50,000. Now he thinks there is more pain in this Bitcoin market. His target is at around $13,000 and then possibly sub $10,000 and even $3,500, which would be a very low chance scenario. Personally, I think $10,000 can happen and the main reason why is because we know that an all-time high took place back last year where BTC topped at around $69,000 and the previous bear markets BTC dropped by 85%. So if this time BTC drops by 85% once again, that would put BTC price at around $10,000. At that time, I would be stacking as much sets as I possibly can for the long period of time. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think BTC will drop lower at this point or this is the bottom? Comment below, subscribe and like this video.